here everybody, Aspect Divine here, and today I am bringing you my top 10 games of 2016. I do have some honorable mentions, uh, but unlike last year, I will not be putting them at the beginning. They will come down after I am one off from the final spot of number one. So, coming in at number 10 for me has to be Dark Souls 3. Some of you may know that I did a brief two episode uh, start of an LP on Dark Souls 3. But uh, due to my uh, uncanny ability of being absolutely terrible at the game, I rage quit and never played the game again. Now, since doing that, I have come across it, picked it up numerous times, given it a few more goes, and still didn't like it. I, well, I liked it, but I was still bad at it. But when push comes to shove, the game is absolutely amazing. Um, graphics are awesome. The mechanics are well done. I'm just terrible at using them. But I could appreciate the atmosphere of the game. I loved it. Really good game. Uh, one I'd recommend to any diehard uh, Souls fan. Now, coming in at number 9 is Battlefield 1. Now, I have a very rocky kind of uh, thing with Battlefield 1. I got the game uh, for free from a mate. It was, um, and I was really happy about it. I was really hyped up for the game. Now, I helped in doing all the single player first, and as you guys probably know, I have an LP of the single player from the channel. Um, and uh, I love the single player. It's amazing. While it is technically just an over overglorified tutorial of the uh, multiplayer, it's still a well done single player. It's got well thought out storyline, good graphics as well, and amazing sound effects. Love the single player. However, the multiplayer is where it falters for me. The multiplayer doesn't feel like a Battlefield multiplayer, and while I haven't got much experience in playing a Battlefield game, uh, I started to play Battlefield 4, another thing a mate gave to me, and I'm loving Battlefield 4. Um, Battlefield 1's multiplayer does not feel anywhere, well, it's similar to Battlefield 4, but I feel it's more like a uh, Star Wars Battlefront clone. Uh, it's just in a World War 1 setting, without the jump packs. So, i got to say that... Uh, Battlefield 1 only makes number 9 on my list. Now, coming in at number 8 is the Bioshock Collection. Now, this is a series of games that are very close to my heart. Bioshock are uh, some of my favourite story time game, story tell, sorry, single player story games of all time. I have spent numerous hours playing through them. I've played through one at least 7 times, 2 a few, a few and I've played through Infinite once. Those memories are still with me to this day, and I've got, I just, I loved it. It was an amazing game, game franchise to play, and having a remastered collection released this year, I was just so hyped for it. <coughs> <coughs> now, sorry about that. Now, while I haven't, uh, well, sorry, while I don't own it, I have played it, and it feels exactly like the original. Some slightly bumped up graphics, not too much of a change in my opinion, but it's there. Uh, and it's just, it's stunning. Um, if you are into single player story, I would recommend Bioshock hands down. Um, there's nothing much else I can say. It's just, it's amazing. Bioshock's, Bioshock's masterpiece. And it's really worth going through playing all three of them. And getting the collection is uh, well worth your time and your money. Now coming in at number seven is Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Now, I started off this year very skeptical on IW, <laughs> not gonna lie. Uh, I am, and still still consider myself a uh, pretty hardcore COD player, and um, I'm not a massive fan of the uh, futuristic systems. While I did enjoy Black Ops 3 quite a bit, that was more towards the zombies aspect of the game than the multiplayer and the campaign. However, IW, uh, I've gotta say, it really, it's really well done. The campaign, I've gone through the entire thing, very fun, uh, it's a good campaign, they, had, they actually had, they had missions which are entirely stealth as well, and a proper stealth system in the game, really cool to go through and enjoy, um, yeah, I can't say much else on the campaign, besides it, of course, it's special mode, the specialist game mode, which is really hard, because, uh, sorry, because wherever you take damage, you can't use that part of your body anymore, which is a really unique way, it's kind of a twist on the Black Ops 3's realistic mode, pretty cool. The multiplayer, once again, uh, I think it's better than BO3s because I find it a little bit more balanced on some of the weapons. Uh, and also the variant system actually isn't OP at all in this, which is really cool. 
Uh, mind you, releasing 700 plus cosmetics in the first like big update is a bit of a stupid thing, but I'll go into that a bit. I'll bring that up in a later video. I want to talk about that, but that's a bit of an annoyance in the multiplayer. But the variants aren't broken, uh, unlike how the DLC guns were in Black Ops 3. Um, but yeah, it was really well done, really good. Uh, the zombies, uh, I... I'm a big fan of. Uh, I find it a lot more of an accessible zombies to try out while still hard enough for the hardcore players to push that extra morale. Uh, and I also like how the gun progress carries between multiplayer and zombies and variants and vice versa and stuff and keys and so on. It works really well. It's neat. Uh, also, uh, Modern Warfare Remastered is a bit of a, a bit of a bonus to the game. Uh, I don't count it on the list because it's technically a part of the game. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say now it does make an honorable mention. I don't want to get too in-depth on that though to like get to the honorable mentions, but I just want to mention it now that it did that the version I got of IW came with Modern Warfare, so I count that as part of the bonus of the game. Now, coming in number six is probably my favourite uh, FPS multiplayer game of this year. Not my favourite FPS, but my favourite multiplayer one. Uh, is Titanfall 2. Now, I have no play the vision Titanfall, ever. But uh, playing Timefall 2 is a blast. And it's a game that I feel does not get as much attention as it really does deserve. Now, I've probably got 20 or so hours in Timefall 2 at this point. Uh, I'm very low level still. I'm, I've am i gotten pretty decent at the game, getting used to the older mechanics. It's It feels very similar to playing IW, but it's way more the way out, the systems are way smoother, the titans are balanced, uh, it's just in general a lot of fun to play. The campaign I've done, a little, I've, dra sorry, I've dabbled in a little bit, not too much, uh, I don't mind it, uh, I can't prefer IW's campaign, I think it was well done, but a Titanfall 2 is still pretty damn good, ca good campaign, but you should go to it for just the multiplayer in my opinion. Multiplayer is hands down a masterpiece, and one you guys should not miss out on. Now, for my number five down through to one, I have actually got the disc cases for them, and I'm going to show the disc cases while I present them. So, for number five for me, has to be Skyrim Remastered. Now, as you can see, I've uh, flipped the case to get the uh, atmospheric background, make it a bit cooler of a case. But it's a really good game. Uh, Skyrim has been one of my all-time favorite games, and getting a remaster this year was so cool. I was originally not, I was originally playing not to pick it up. However, after playing it again, I couldn't I couldn't help myself. I had to get it again, and I've already pumped in multiple multiple hours into this game. In fact, I'm planning on doing uh, a few streams on it a little bit later on down the line. There's not much I need to say on Skyrim because you all should know it. But it's a game that um, if you're into open world games, you should buy, guaranteed. Now, number four is a game I didn't expect to make my list because I have a bit of a rocky relationship with the rest of the franchise. And that is Uncharted 4. Now, as many of you probably know, I loathe Uncharted 1 through to 3. Uh, mechanics, in my opinion, are very basic and they don't work well. However, and also the story is a bit there, and I don't like Nate's character in those. In number four, Nate is a lot more thought out, he's a lot more serious, the mechanics are perfected, it's got a great storyline, it's really fun to play, but, and they have a really cool stealth, stealth mechanics that I love to play. I love playing stealth games. And playing with uh, playing with those stealth mechanics and cracking necks and stuff, and even doing a, this is Sparta kicks on enemies off cliffs, it was great fun. Um, the multiplayer too is a real standout in this game. Uh, I love playing the multiplayer with my mates, and also the survival mode is pretty cool too. Uh, so Uncharted 4 gets my fourth spot, my top 10 games of 2016. Now, number three is one that uh, should be no surprise to anyone, really. Uh, it's from the amazing creators uh, of Hearthstone and World of Warcraft. It's Overwatch, made by Blizzard. Um, they've done it again. They've made another amazing title. Uh, Overwatch is a thought-out fun uh, sorry, team first-person shooter and it's one that I would recommend to nearly anyone. <laughs> Unless you don't like playing the FPS scene or something something kind of like a MOBA but not really um, then if sorry but sorry but if you're not in those categories you should get Overwatch. 
Uh, it's great fun. I've again, I have I have all my games on the PS4, but uh, um, PC apparently uh, it gets pr pretty damn good on PC too. But uh, for me as a console peasant, uh, it's pretty damn good, and I definitely recommend it to most people. Now number two is my favourite FPS of this year, quite easily, and one of my and this is a game that is pretty. It's a game that has a lot of history with my family, and that is. Doom 2016. Now, Doom, I've never played the originals. I've, ju oh, I've just got the original Doom on my uh, emulator set up, and I've begun playing through that. It's cool. But uh, my dad grew up playing Doom, and being able to play what he would play as a kid, mind you, better graphics and so on, uh, is really cool. The soundtrack in this game is absolutely amazing. The graphics are beautiful. Uh, 60 FPS, sorry, 60, a solid 60 FPS on console, non-stop, that's, that's astounding. Uh, good story, it's a Doom game, you don't want a over-complex story, it's a simple story, but it's good for what it is. Uh, multiplayer is pretty damn good too, uh, I have, I've had quite a bit of fun on the multiplayer. I wouldn't say it's anywhere near, near, near as good as any other, other multiplayers on my list, but for the, for the single player on this game, it's amazing. Not including, of course, we have snap maps, so you've got unlimited possibilities within the game. Now, onto my honorable mentions. I have two di I have two disc cases, and the rest of them I'm just going to say with uh, nothing on my hands. So the first one has to be Attack on Titan Wings of Freedom. Now, I got the Treasure Limited Edition version of this from Japan. So my copy is the Japanese version, uh, as you can see all in Japanese. Uh, I have yet to complete this game. I'm stuck on a third mission because uh, I can't read Japanese and I don't know what I'm meant to be doing, but playing it is really fun. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm in the anime. Uh, the maneuver, sorry, the 3D maneuvering gear is really well done, really cool. Uh, the voice acting is on point. It's really cool. Uh, graphics, uh, they're not they're not. They're kind of like Overwatch graphics, in my opinion. Uh, they're good, but not over the top. Uh, amazing, like Dooms or Uncharted Fours were, but still a pretty damn good game. Doesn't make my list because uh, doesn't make it into the top ten because there are a few problems. One of them is the language barrier that screws me over a lot. But besides that, it's really good. The other one which I have a solid copy for has to be. Uh, let's grab it. Life is Strange. Now, I know technically Life is Strange was released last year. However, I pre-ordered the copy, the co so the physical copy on console was released this year. I got the pre-ordered version. Um, I don't really need to say too much on this game because you guys have already seen uh, what I've said in my 2015 one. And if you haven't, you can go watch that. I go on on a house game. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, but I thought it deserved an honorable mention. He, I would have put it on the list, but I thought it's not technically fair because it wasn't released in uh, 20, um, 2016. Now, a few other ones I want to get on to. Uh, obviously, Modern Warfare Remastered, as I mentioned on the IW. Amazing game. Uh, a lot of fun. I put t probably too many hours into that already. Good fun. Uh, another one that makes my list of honorable mentions is Battleborn. Uh, now, a lot of people disagree with me on this, but I think Battleborn had a lot of potential and is fun for what it is. However, rushing to sorry, rushing to be released at the same time that uh, Overwatch was was a mistake on the devs' part. They screwed up, but I still think it's a pretty okay game. And the final honorable mention I want to make has to be Paragon. You guys have probably seen it on my channel. It's uh, a MOBA that's available on the console, similar to Smite. But a lot more of a 3D mechanic, like the world's a lot more 3D. Really fun, amazing graphics, cool characters, and I've put a lot of hours into Paragon. Probably one of my favorite MOBAs of all time, actually. Anyway, on to the number one spot. You guys probably already guessed it, but number one, my number one game of 2016, and as it happens of all time, is Dishonored 2. I do not. I, Dishonored 2 is an absolute masterpiece. Uh, it takes number one and improves on everything it had to offer. It's just, it's, 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 it's an astounding game. Uh, if you like stealth games, I would have to say get it. It's really worth it. And if you like action games, get it. It's It can be either or. 
if you like supernatural killing games, get it. You can just you can. That's what I love about Dishonored. You can play it how you want to. As of right now, I have done over twelve runs, not including speed runs of Dishonored Two. I have done three speed runs. My record right now is fifty-four minutes, so I've gotten quite a few hours out of it. A lot of replayability within it, and I, as I said, it's a masterpiece. I'd really recommend it to anyone. And that was my top 10 games of 2016. And of course, the honorable mentions as well. Uh, I really do hope you enjoyed this list. Uh, and I'm really curious on what, what games you agree with and what games you disagree. Uh, please leave in the comments below what your top 10 games of 2016 were. I'm really curious and maybe we can start a bit of conversation up on uh, what games I'm looking forward to in 2017. Because I do have a list like that coming out very soon, which will be my top 10 most anticipated games of 2017. But until that list comes out, I gotta say, peace out guys.